Good evening, everyone. Al Fragnoli, Zach Sooty. We have League of Leaders Hot Topic Tuesday tonight. Um, and Al, we have a lot of things to talk about. Sports world, there's a lot going on. A lot of things that uh, have come out this past week. And we got to talk the World Series. Um, Tampa Bay Rays manager Kevin Cash pulled Blake Snell in the sixth inning as he was rolling. Uh, he was in a rhythm. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you think he pulled him too soon? And, you know, hindsight 2020, um, wh what were your thoughts watching that game? Yeah, that's a great question, Zach. So, honestly, when I'm watching that game, um, you know, I'm thinking they pulled him too soon. And my whole mindset is is I, I know the Tampa Bay Rays and, and all baseball teams have tons and tons of data. They've got a lot of intelligent guys up in the front office crunching numbers and providing tons of data for these teams and these managers to look at. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, Kevin Cash has a ton of information at his fingertips there and he's, he's going off of, off of that information. But I just think that sometimes you still got to go with, with your gut, you got to go with the eyeball test. And I, to me, think that this was a no brainer where even if the data and there's some numbers that you have that show that you should take Blake Schnell out, I think you got to leave him in based off that eyeball test. I mean, you know, I think he faced 18 hitters up to that point in the sixth inning. He was cruising right along, only allowed two hits. That was the second hit that he allowed uh, when they pulled him. He was at 75 pitches, still had a, a, a lot left in the tank, in my opinion. He probably could have won another two strong innings. Um, you know, obviously didn't allow any runs up, up until that point. I think he struck out eight or nine batters uh, out of the 18 that he faced. So, you know, he, he was at a strikeout ratio of 50% um, of the hitters that he was, that he was um, facing in that game. So I think that they definitely should have left him in at least face another hitter. If he gets another hit after that, maybe you go yank him, but um, I think they should have left him in. And, you know, I don't know that the Rays would have won the game necessarily. They still only had one run hard to win games one to nothing. Uh, but I certainly don't think that that they that he would have allowed three runs. Um, you know, I, I, it probably would have been one one going into extra innings or something like that. But they should have they should have left them in, in my opinion. What are your thoughts, Zach? Uh, I I agree. Watching the game, um, I I, I kind of couldn't believe they were pulling them in such a high stakes game. I mean, you you have the data that tells you the third time through the lineup that you're going to get hit. Um, it's just the percentages are against you Go the third time through through the lineup. It's fact. Um, I get the data. I understand go, you know, looking at the data and making decisions based off the data. But I think one thing that managers, leaders need to do is go with what you said, your gut, but look at the athlete themselves and say, this person's on fire. Like, I have to think that Blake Snell had it that night. And when we talk about it in sports, um, it is, you know, that extra, you're in that extra level, you're in the zone. Um, you know, I've played sports my whole life. I think I was in the zone one time. I don't know if you've ever been in the zone Al, but I was in the zone one time. I never, I didn't miss a shot in a basketball game and it was like an outer body experience. Um, and I think these professional athletes get into that zone a lot more often than, you know, your rec league basketball players like me. Um, but I think that's what uh, Blake Snell um, was accomplishing that night. I think he was in that zone. I think he was pitching. I mean, you said 50% strikeout ratio uh, against the batters he's faced that night. The, the guy had to have been in some sort of zone and to pull him based on data, you got to have a balance of that and, Listen, the Rays got to where they were because of how they coach, manage, and make decisions. I get that. But game six, you're facing the Dodgers. The guy is rolling. I'd go with Blake Snell. I'd keep him in, and I, I would lose with Blake Snell. I, I think I would, I would feel better losing with him on the mound than pulling him in that situation and losing the game the way they did, because then you wouldn't be second guessing yourself. Like the guy was rolling, you lost the game. Who would fault you, you know, for leaving them in a third time around? Yeah. That's my thought. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Definitely agree with you. So, um, you know, but unfortunately they, they went to the pen and it, and it didn't work out and it 
potentially cost them a World Series championship. But um, anyway, we'll stick with baseball here as we transition to the next question. So a couple new hires in the baseball world uh, that just came about, both from the AL Central. Uh, Chicago White Sox hired Tony La Russa, longtime uh, manager and, and person involved in baseball, been around for years. Hasn't managed uh, in probably close to a decade, I believe. Um, and he's in his upper 70s. Uh, so there's some questions about his age um, with that hire. Detroit Tigers also uh, hire AJ Hinge. So that is, uh, I don't want to say a controversial hire, but it'll get some attention, obviously, because um, he just served his one year suspension uh, from the Houston Astros and their cheating scandal there. Um, but anyway, Zach, with these two hires, Tigers and the White Sox, think they're good hires? Um, I, I think it's it's hard to say. I mean, Tony LaRusso is a winner. He's experienced, 76 years old. Yeah, he, you know, he, he, age. I mean, um, I, I don't know, though. I mean, Tony LaRusso is kind of surprised to me. Um, you know, inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think everybody th- kind of thought he was done with his baseball career. Um, at, at least from a coaching standpoint. Um, so I think that was a huge surprise. Um, I can't see it being a long-term hire, you know, what, what, what can be, uh, you know, his, his, his goal, um, hopefully maybe groom a, a bench coach or something for, for the White Sox and, and create some succession planning. Um, you know, that's my HR perspective. Um, hopefully there, you know, he can, he can share some of his knowledge and, and get some other coaches, some experience so that there's a, a, a good transition for the White Sox over the next few years. Um, as for the Detroit Tigers, um, you know, they've had a lot of losing seasons, uh, a lot of difficult years. Um, AJ Hinch probably wants to get another opportunity to, to sh- prove that he can coach a winning team. Um, without all of the surroundings of um, scandals and cheating. So I think he has a lot to prove. Um, But I think also it's going to have to parallel with baseball operations being as, uh, you know, uh, progressive as they were in Houston. So I think it's going to be good for the Tigers. Um, I think it's good for AJ to get another opportunity. I hope it works out for them. Um, I th- to say they're good hires, I-, I have my doubts and questions on both, as you can probably tell. So um, what are your thoughts? So I actually like both hires, and I'm going to tell you why real quick. Uh, Chicago White Sox, simple reason is um, I think they brought in a manager with the mindset that he's not going to last a long time. I think Tony La Russa is probably going to be there two years, maybe three at the very, very most. But they're in a win right now mentality, and the team is set up to have success right away. Um, So that's why I'm okay with that hire. If they were rebuilding, um, I don't think that would have been the right hire by any means, but I'm totally fine with that. And then AJ Hinch, I like that hire as well. I think that he is a good manager. I think he made a big mistake in Houston. And I think he honestly learned from that mistake. He's one of those guys that has already come out and apologized. He did that right away. Uh, He's not like some of the players that we've heard speak, the the Carlos Correa's of the world, who doesn't seem to show remorse at all. AJ Hinch has shown remorse. I think he does uh, feel horrible for his part in that cheating scandal. And I don't think anything like this will ever, ever happen under his watch ever again, probably because he'll be banned from the game of baseball, in my opinion. But, (laughs) um, But I think he's very analytically driven. I think he's a smart manager, and I think he's going to have quite a bit of success here in Detroit. Um, so, you know, that's just a, a quick snippet on, on why I think both hires are good moves for both organizations. Well, you're an, you're an eternal optimist for the Detroit Tigers and Detroit sports. So uh, you're hopeful, I know. Um, I am. Yes, yes, I am. I, I and will. I know I know you really like Donnie Kelly, too. Um, but being a Pittsburgher, um, he's not ready yet. He's, he's got to win with the Pittsburgh yet. Pirates. He needs a little bit more time. I do like Donnie Kelly, baby. That's what they refer to him here in Detroit as. But yeah, he, I think he's going to be a good manager when the opportunity comes. Um, next qu- next question we'll jump right into, uh, Zach. We'll, we'll shift a little bit here to college football. Trevor Lawrence, obviously, um, probably the biggest name in college football this year. Probably going to be the number one overall draft pick if he elects to leave early. Um, 
comes down with COVID this past weekend. He's out in the matchup against Boston College, and boy, did they struggle without him. Uh, barely squeaked away with the win. Uh, the announcement right after that game, Dabo Sweeney announces that uh, Trevor is going to miss the upcoming game and probably their biggest game of the season uh, against uh, the fourth-ranked Notre Dame um, Irish. Uh, it's going to be in South Bend in Indiana there. Um, so a road challenge for them. Um, who do you think wins this game? Honestly, I think Notre Dame does win. Um, I think they beat Clemson. Um, you know, I think Lawrence remaining out is is an issue for them, um, for Clemson. And I think Notre Dame ca- capitalizes. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to see Trevor Lawrence also kind of lose his Heisman speak, Heisman talk because of this COVID positive and not being able to play. Um, he, he's fallen in being a favorite for the Heisman because of this. Um, so it, it's interesting to see. Uh, I, I think Notre Dame pulls it out. I think they win. And uh, I think Lawrence comes back. Um, and hopefully, I, I hope the guy wins a Heisman. Um, th- he deserves it. I think he is the best player in college football. Um, I, it's unfortunate that he did have uh, COVID positive and is going to miss a couple games. Your thoughts on this this big game, Al? Yeah, I agree with you. It's a shame that um, that Trevor Lawrence might not win the Heisman due to this. Um, I'm hopeful that he's going to come back stronger than ever, though, have a great second half to this uh, shortened season, and and that he does win the Heisman because I think everybody knows that he is uh, the best player in college football this year, and, and what a rare talent he he is. He's a, he's a special, gifted athlete. Um, I, I disagree with you. I do not think that Notre Dame is going to win this game. I think it's going to be a fantastic matchup. Uh, but I, I think that Boston College is a better team than what most people think. And I just feel that Clemson was overlooking Boston College and was thinking ahead towards this upcoming week. Um, you think they underprepared? I do. I do. I'm maybe not underprepared, but you know, the coaches definitely didn't underprepare, but I think that some of the athletes maybe, um, you know, we're thinking ahead a little bit. I think that naturally happens with younger athletes. And, and I, I do believe that that happened. And I, I think that, uh, uh, it's going to be one heck of a game. I'll tell you that, but I do think that, uh, Dabble Sweeney is going to have these guys playing their best game of the year and, uh, they'll be ready to perform very well. And, and I do think that they'll beat Notre Dame. Well, looking forward to it. So sticking with college football, um, the Michigan state, Michigan rivalry, uh, Michigan opened up the week as a 27 and a half point favorite to beat in-state rival, Michigan state. They went in the Saturday as 21 point favorites. So a huge swing there. MSU won the game, a very close game, 27, 24, and this drops Jim Harbaugh to one and six at home against Michigan State and Ohio State. He had beat Michigan State three of the last four seasons heading into this past weekend's game. He is yet to beat Ohio State in his time at Michigan. And we all know you take the Michigan job, you got to beat Ohio State. Does Michigan need to part ways with Jim Harbaugh? Yeah, boy, this uh, this game still has me heated. Um, honestly. I am one of the biggest Jim Harbaugh supporters out there. I do think he's a good coach. I know you probably disagree, Zach, based on some of our past conversations. Um, I think he's a good coach. However, uh, I know you can't base it off of one game, but I'm going to base this off of his entire body work. He's got a very good record in his time at U of M. However, he cannot beat Ohio State. Um, And uh, these games against Michigan State that he's dropped, um, I mean, this – he has two losses that should have been very easy wins if they weren't, um, you know, the, the botched punt in the one game a couple of years back uh, as time was running out. And then you have this game. You, you cannot lose to a rival when you when you open up as four touchdown favorites. And so in my opinion, uh, they weren't prepared. Uh, for some reason, I feel like he can't get the guys motivated against their in their biggest rivalry games uh, for whatever reason that is. I, you know, I have no idea. Um, but you know, we'll see how the rest of this year ends out, but I don't, you know, they got tough games against Wisconsin, Penn state, even though they're 0 and two is still a good squad. Um, Indiana this upcoming week is, is ranked very high and is undefeated to start the year. Um, you know, in Ohio state as well, you know, so they could very well easily lose another four games in a, an abbreviated season, finish below 500. And if that's the case, 
it's definitely time to move on. But I, I do think they got to part ways and 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 find a replacement that can get the, these young athletes fired up, excited, and want to go out and knock off their rivals and be prepared to do so. Yeah, I think rivalry games are always difficult when you see big point spreads um, with rivalry games that scares me because I feel like anything can go. Um, it can go either way. Y you know, each other so well, that game planning. Um, maybe it's, it's, it's the athletes know each other. Um, it, it just makes things a little bit more personal. So I, I believe those big rival games can be a lot of fun for that reason. Um, as for does, J does, does, Michigan need to part ways with Jim Harbaugh. I think it's time um, that they they explore other options. Um, I was never a fan of Jim Harbaugh. When, when Michigan made that hire, I, I kind of questioned it. Um, I just never felt that Jim Harbaugh was the leader that Michigan needed. Um, I think he had, you know, I think he's always played down to some opponents. Um, so I think it's carried it to, to, to Michigan with him. And as I said earlier, you got to beat Ohio state. When you take that Michigan job, uh, you have to have a, the ability to beat Ohio state or at least compete, um, you know, and, and, and make it, uh, you know, to get a couple wins in, um, be, otherwise you'll be in the situation that Jim Harbaugh is in right now. And it's unfortunate. I've never been a fan. Uh, I, I, I am a fan of, you know, John Harbaugh, um, in, in Baltimore, um, but uh, Jim, uh, for some reason, um, I, I think it was a, I think Michigan could have done a, a better job during that hiring process. And here we are a few years later talking about him, uh, you know, possibly losing his job because rivalries and, and, and Ohio state and big games, um, he can't get his players to complete, compete his athletes to compete. So, um, you know, those are my thoughts. Yeah, so um, you mentioned an interesting thing. You have to at least be able to compete. And and when you watch Michigan, Ohio State in the last few years since Jim Harbaugh has been here, there's only been one game um, several years ago, which they probably should have won and they and they lost. Um, and that was in in, in Columbus and in Ohio State. Uh, and, and they couldn't get it done. But the the other five or six years that, that Jim Harbaugh has been here, they have absolutely gotten destroyed by three, four touchdowns in these games. And that just can't happen. I know Ohio State is probably in the last two decades had had their most success in the school's history. However, uh, you definitely can't continuously lose, um, you know, by 20, 30 points in your in your biggest rivalry game of the year. So um, anyway, that, that, those are my thoughts. Uh, time to part ways, move on, bring in a new leader, a new hire, fresh start. Yes. So See you, Jim. Um, yeah, goodbye, Jim. Uh, anyway, though, that wraps it up for uh, Hot Topic Tuesday. We hope you join us uh, this Sunday um, as we talk to Natalie Clark uh, with the Miami Dolphins. And we hope you join us next Tuesday for Hot Topics Tuesday as well. Thank you.